Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today I have a challenge to paint on a rock. And what I'm using is very inexpensive craft paints that you can pick up at oh, maybe a Walmart or a craft and hobby store uh, that come in little small kits and little containers like this. And these aren't the paints I usually work with. So that's gonna be my challenge. But I wanted to do uh, similar materials that you would be using um, at home if you just go to a craft store and pick up. So these are the colors that you'll be in a small kit. Now, this isn't really a true green. This is more muted with um, a little bit of um, white added in. So you're not getting these bright, bright greens. So this was straight from the can. So I wanna show you how you can fix these paints and make them a little bit better. And that's by color mixing. So the first thing I'm gonna do, what, what I'm doing is I'm gonna be painting this monarch. Let me show you what it's gonna look like. I got this from a kid's book, this little image. It's gonna be a monarch on some just green background. Um, and I like doing the idea of having butterflies on rocks because it's like, oh, there's a it makes it look like a real butterfly. So when you see it out in the garden, you think, oh, there's a real butterfly. And it has a pop of bright color. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, go ahead and sketch in my monarch butterfly. And I'm just gonna sketch it in with my paintbrush and I'm gonna just use this yellow straight from the jar. And I'm gonna decide where I want my center of my butterfly to be. And then, yeah, these are pretty thin, so we're gonna need lots of coats. And then I'm going to do the top wing. I'm gonna draw, so I did a straight line. And I prefer not to do the pencil because then I, my pencil lines aren't gonna show. And then I'm gonna do a diagonal line up. So I have a line up to one edge of the rock and a line back. Now the rock I chose is a very flat um, river rock. And then I'm gonna do the bottom wing. So I come to the center and I'm gonna go down, come to the center, down to the edge of the rock. And now the monarch's bottom wing is rounded. So I'm gonna do a kind of like a C-shaped curve or a U-curve around that wing. And the reason I'm doing yellow as a base coat, I'll, I'll eventually work up color, but that way it absorbs into the rock and it's my first layer of color. And then when I add my oranges on top, it'll brighten up that orange color. So I've done two, it's, and now they're forming almost teardrop shapes. Okay. And those are the bottom wings. Now the top wings of the monarch, they're pointier here, and then it kind of comes diagonally down, and then we connect to the center. And what's great about when you're painting it, as you need to change the shape, I can curve this out a little bit, and then you don't have to worry about your pencil lines or sketching, erasing. That's why I like to go right to paint. And the light value, if I make a mistake, it's easily hidden. So it's point rounded at the tip here. And then I'm gonna come diagonally down. So I didn't come straight down. If I came straight down, see I want this to be a little bit curved inward. So I'm coming diagonally down and then bring it to the center. And then you adjust and shape the wings as you'd like. I want it to be a little bit more pointy here. And then this is gonna come out. A slight curve out. And then notice I keep on going over this. I'm blending in any thick areas of my paint, smooth. I'm gonna add another coat down here. Any thick areas, I'm blending in smooth. There, so there I have. Now I'm gonna adjust this a little bit because the Monarch, the head's a little bit smaller. There. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be painting, just giving that background color. Now, like I said before, this is the color that came out of my tube. 
so or my container so I don't want this color green it's too muted so I'm going to adjust the green by adding a, some yellow I'll take a little bit of that green my blue isn't that great either and this makes it a beautiful lime green color and I slowly add little bits of this green to the yellow and now I'm getting a little bit better green it's more limeier green and brighter this was pretty dull now if you want it to intensify it a little bit just a hint of this blue and this will make it the dark value green see here and that's good for shadow but I really want to focus on this brighter green right here so now I'm going to do a coat, a base coat around my butterfly in this brighter green color. And I definitely like this one better for outdoors. Now I'm not worried too much about if I make a mistake around my body because I'm going to be doing the black center line down here. So I'm just giving a little bit of a line in here. And just thin coat here the green you can see covers a lot better just having a little bit of that because this was made with a little bit more white or chalky base much more white fillers in that paint whereas the yellow was much more transparent so I'm doing a thin coat here I do want to mention that before I started this I rinsed the rock a little bit I wiped it down with some damp towels um, because there's powder on this. It's actually just granite dust or rock dust. And I did wipe it down so that my paint would flow better on it. And see here, you can adjust the shapes of your wings or the head. His head doesn't stick up as much from the wings, so I'm going to pull off that and just a smooth coat all around. Now once I've done this, now I'm gonna start up on the color of the butterfly. So I did a base coat in yellow. Now, and that was kinda of like my preliminary sketch in yellow. Then you assess it, if you like it, move on. So I'm gonna go ahead, rinse my brush. And now I'm going to dry the brush as well because you don't want the acrylic to be too watery. And I'm going to mix up some of that uh, orange color. Now the kit that I received was a kit that did not have the orange, so we're going to make it. I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to barely touch the red and I'm putting it into my yellow. And actually this red is not doesn't have a lot of pigment in it so I'm gonna need a little bit more it's got a lot of fillers I can tell by that color I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera or not it's very milky same thing with that green very milky even that blue it's, anyways so I'm gonna be adding more a little bit more of that yellow to it and you, you add it slowly small amounts at a time because yellow is a pretty weak color And so I'm going to add that to it. And now when you get the color that you like, and I don't want a really bright, deep orange right now because I'm going to slowly work up my oranges. There's some lighter values in the Monarch here. So I'm going to go ahead, coat my Monarch here, the wings again, give it another coat. And again, it doesn't matter if you go over the center because we're gonna paint black on top and black's gonna hide everything. These, these wings are rounded. And then rounded here. It's got a nice shape. Slightly curved here, and then the top is rounded, like a U shape. The best thing to do is take your, a, paint, a picture of the Monarch and keep on going with, by reference, look back on it. Keep on looking back to it as reference. Where it attaches to the body, it's a little bit thinner. I'm gonna adjust this yellow paint. I'm just gonna go back and get my green and fix it. Okay. 
and that's a good nice base coat and I do want to adjust this I want this more angular down here so I'm coming over and then in there there and I'm going to let that dry a bit and then I'm going to add what I want to do is add a little bit of two tonal value in my monarch so I'm going to take a smaller brush and I'm going to mix my I'm going to take into this orange a little bit more red just deepen this up a bit still not a lot but I've added to that orange now so it's a darker value red orange and I'm gonna add some darker value red orange in here yeah you can see that good putting in some red or darker or red orange here the lower wings here are lighter a little bit more red orange here and just blend it in so by touching the edge of the wet paint and then I can just continue lightly now. I'm just bringing the tip of my brush here and lightly blending in with just the tip. Let me show you how I blend. And if you hit it real light and slow and careful, you're gonna blend that in smooth. I'll go slow so you can see how I blend. Barely touching the tip and I'm just blending my edges. Let me show you here. So here's an area where I can distinctly see the two colors. I'm just gonna lightly touch the edge with just the tip of my brush. Now, if you have a lot of paint on your brush, wash it, dry it. Now my washing isn't that great. And then lightly touch with a clean brush and that blends those two colors together even and easily. I'm not putting much paint on that brush. I'll show you how I'm loading up. See, there's very little paint on that brush and it's darker at the top of the wings I'll even hit it with a little bit of this brighter red so you can see better on, on the camera and then when you slowly blend it I'm gonna wipe my brush dry now no water I'm just wiping it dry and I'm slowly blending in see how I'm blending it together blends in together nicely just like that now I'm going to go ahead and add there is a little bit of white spot I'm just going to add that now the monarch has a little bit of a white tip up here and some white dots so I've dried my brush and then I think what I'll do is I'll do the black first and then no nope, what I'll do is I'm gonna do a band this has a band of stripes right in this area on the monarch so I'm just doing a white line first then I'll do my black on top I think that'll be better so the white line here is the band this is where the band of black is but the band of black has white polka dots on it. So we'll see if it, we'll do it like this and see if it'll work. Right on this edge is the, oh, I'm, I made a mistake. I'm gonna bring this back. I want this to be yellow orange down here. That's what's great about paint. This is gonna be yellow orange. That was a mistake, sorry about that. Now, that was too thick, so I'm going to blend it out. There. See? Oola! You fix your mistakes quickly. Okay, so now I'm going to work up my black. And I'm going to use a smaller brush right now, just for the little skinny black stripes. Okay, I'm going to start now. I'm going to do the black. And when I do the black, I have a skinnier brush, and I'm putting it into the color, and I'll show you on this piece of paper here. 
and I kind of twist, I'm gonna twist this and turn, spin my brush. So I'm turning the brush like this with my hand as I'm spinning into the color, just a little bit of the color. That way I have a nice point on my end. I want this to be as pointy as I can so I can get nice skinny lines. And I'm gonna start off resting my hand and tracing the edges here with just the tip of the brush. That's how I get a nice skinny point. Twisting every time I go into the color, nice and pointy. That ensures a nice, beautiful, pointy line. So I'm gonna trace these edges, because the Monarch has this black outlining. And it's got, from these points in here, well, it's kind of circular. I'm gonna trace around these little white dots with the just the tip of my pen, I mean my brush. And I'm gonna bring it to the center. Let me give a center line, straight down the middle. And then I'm gonna bring this right to the center line. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Again, twisting the brush, that's how I get a nice skinny tip. You don't want puddles on the end of that. Draw the circle with your brush. Now it's a little hard for me because I left my eyeglasses at home. And we're doing a live demonstration today for the kids. And now I'm gonna bring this over. Again, twisting that brush. You don't want those puddles. Bring this over from this diagonal line. And then I'm gonna connect. I'm tracing the outline here. Tracing the outline. And then I'm bringing it right to the center. And this gives you nice detail. And I'm gonna bring this down to the middle of my body. I'm gonna do the circular head. And then we've got the thorax area. It's kind of like almost a, well, almost cigar shape. And then the abdomen is very skinny coming down to end narrow point. It's a little bit thicker here, tapering, just like that. So I'm going to do the same on the other side, tracing these edges, meeting in the center, spinning that brush again. You want a real point, skinny thin point. Whoops. Oh, I did go up over there. This brush is, oh, it doesn't say the size on this. Oh, a zero, a Dynasty Zero, which is an okay brush. It's okay for kid use at school. Now, I don't give this to the younger children just because there's very few hairs on here and they're gonna ruin it. Now I'm gonna go ahead, they'll smash it in too much. Oh. I kind of messed up on these antennas. I got a little too thick there. All right, so now I'm gonna put in those, oh, I forgot this area here. I'm gonna now put in the, I like the Princeton's better. They're my favorite. And then this side has coming down coming down. Now I'm gonna work up those little, there's supposed to be white dots in here. And so I did a band of white just so it's easier. So I'm gonna trace this band of white with black. I'm thinking it might be easier. It may have been easier to do the white dots, but we'll try this and see if it doesn't work, I'll know next time. And I'm just gonna be putting in some lines. This may be easier to do the, and just bringing some skinny lines down because it's got little white dots. So just by filling this with tiny lines. I think I'm losing my white dots. I'll go back over it. I'll go back over that and put some white dots on after that dries. Sometimes with acrylic, well, with acrylic it'll be okay. I'll try and see if I can get this. Like I said, I, don't, I left my glasses at home so it's hard for me to see. That's what happens when you get old, right? You can't see. 
That, that's a little bit better. So those are supposed to be the little white dots on the monarch. And the same thing down here. Curve. And then these little veins, these are little um, veins that come in off of this. And it's got skinny, skinny. Twist that. Now, sometimes it depends on how thick your acrylic paint is. If the acrylic paint is too thick, you can thin it down slightly with water. But this acrylic paint seems to be very inexpensive. So it's not that, now I'm putting in these skinny veins here, so it's not that thick. So I didn't have to, oh, it's looking good already. Now, this has a little bit of a rounded, you just tweak these shapes. When you look at your real monarch, you can tweak the shapes. So this has slightly curved here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the other side. It's got some really skinny stripes. It's got one coming here, and then this kind of bends over. Just putting in all the stripes. This really makes the butterfly come alive, this black. Now this acrylic paint is somewhat of a matte, meaning it doesn't seem very shiny. And like I said, it's not an expensive one. It's actually a very, very inexpensive acrylic. It's a good student grade. Because it flows smooth, that's what I like about it. But I don't know how much protection if you keep these outside. So I would coat this with some polyurethane spray or clear varnish, some kind of a clear spray or a painted on polyurethane. Yeah, and I think I, pref I would prefer to do the white dots. I think that'll be easier. I'm gonna wash, dry. It's real important to dry it. When I dry the brush, I just kind of draw it over here across that paper towel. You don't want to smash these. These hairs are so small, they're very easy to ruin. And so I'm gonna twist it into my white paint. What I didn't want, that's why I didn't do it at first, I didn't want dots sticking out because sometimes with acrylic it's thick, thick. And I didn't want these to be like polka dots sticking out, three-dimensional. So that's why I tried to do it the other way with banding. But if you're, once your black is dry, then you can go ahead and put some tiny dots. Either way, if you practice on paper first, you can see which one you like better. I'm almost liking the other way better. And another way of doing really, really tiny dots, even having a Q-tip, not a Q-tip, but toothpick, or the back end of your paintbrush even, Yeah, that works good with tiny little dots on that monarch. That works better. The tip of this brush is a little frayed, so it's not giving me great tiny dots. Yeah, that works out great, these little tiny dots like that. And I can even fix these in here. And there's basically our monarch. And if you want to even put a little shadow underneath them, you can. With that green, let me get some green shadow. I had showed you I mixed it. You take a hint of the blue, bring it to your green. So it's that bluer green here. And if you put a little shadow here, underneath, and then go back to your original green, 
and blend it out. Some of mine's already drying. And there you have your painted monarch. And actually, it does have a little bit of dots. Let me do that. Right in here on the tummy. Doot, doot. Really small. You might want to do a toothpick for that. And voila! Painted monarch. And here is the final rock. And what I did was I cleaned up the lines right around the antenna that I did not like. And then I added some more darker lines to match the natural monarch or the real monarch in this area here, rounded it. And then I fixed this little line in here where it was too thick and it shouldn't have any little white dots. I'm just being real picky about the species of the monarch. Uh, but I did touch up those things. And then I did, you can see it's a little shiny. I put a glazing medium over this just to protect it because that was a very inexpensive acrylic that I used. Um, but if you're going to use these outside, I'd spray it with an, um, a, a, some kind of a polymer or a clear spray paint that is made for outside use. That'll help protect this. And actually, if they're going to be permanent additions outside, I'd use a really good quality um, outside, some type of a good quality outside acrylic paint. Um, that's made for indoor outdoor use um, or even uh, enamel, some enamels for modeling. They make these model car enamels that would work for indoor outdoor use too. But uh, if they're permanent addition to your garden and you're gonna spend hours painting them. But for this, it was just a quick demonstration. So inexpensive paint is fine. Um, but there's the finished product. And what the glazing does or the clear coat does, it is enhances the color. You can really see the difference between the lighter values here and the darker values here. It brings out the colors that are in the paint and makes them show up brighter and vivid and give more detail. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, make sure you like it and subscribe if you want to see more rock painting videos.